All right, a quick pre-lab lecture for the liquid, liquid, or sorry, liquid vapor phase equilibrium lab. You'll start off by putting one of your liquids, and it'll be labeled which one, here, ethanol. Um, I think your lab manual says to start with 65 mils, but that won't be quite enough, so you can check with your instructor to make sure that you're putting in the correct amount so that we are not heating dry glass uh, or minimize that. So we'll add the ethanol right through here. You don't have to measure the volume precisely. You can use a graduated cylinder for that. And if you're taking any solvents from outside of the, the stock in the hood, you can use a, a beaker that would be labeled, a clean beaker with a watch glass on top to minimize the vapors. Introduce the first liquid, ethanol, um, into the flask. And if you're doing this lab a second time, we have another identical setup here where you would be using cyclohexane as your first liquid and adding ethanol to that. But let's go back here. So this pre-lab lecture is for the scenario where we have ethanol. Bring it uh, to a boil and the temperature thermometer here is, the thermometer is placed right at the exit to the condenser so that when we have phase equilibrium between the vapor and the liquid, the temperature is recorded right there at the interface. So bring the ethanol to a boil and record the temp boiling temperature of ethanol. Don't record it too quickly, make sure it's steady. A good reflux is not pouring down, but a good fast uh, drip rate. If, it's, uh, if the heat is on too high, uh, the condenser, as you see, is not very large. There's a risk of uh, exceeding the capacity of this system, and also this will bump. Um, there were glass beads here there. So you want to put some glass beads into your flask, and that'll prevent bumping because, as you can see, this is not being stirred while you're boiling it. So once you've recorded the boiling point of ethanol, you want to make your first addition of cyclohexane. You can do that with a pasture pipette, and you'll do it right through the condenser. And if Connie's put on a drying tube, you'll just remove it. Um, nothing should be coming out anyways because the water is on, and I forgot to mention that, but make sure you have the cold water in the bottom and out the top, and not on too quickly so that it doesn't blow the hose off. A few drops of cyclohexane. How do you know when you've added enough? Well, it'll drip down and it's going to change the composition of my boiling liquid. And so therefore, it'll change the boiling temperature of that boiling liquid. If it's still at registering the same boiling point as ethanol, the pure liquid, then you haven't quite added enough, or you haven't waited long enough for the new equilibrium. To come into play. So it should stop boiling when you add the cold cyclohexane and then it'll re-establish. So you're, you want to aim for your temperature to drop by a degree or two, but not more than that. So make some careful additions and, and then you'll, you'll see after the first one how much you need. If someone did it the week before you, you can have a look at their data as well just to see. So uh, we didn't measure the volume too precisely, so how do we know the composition? Ah, well, we're actually going to measure the refractive index using this refractometer. And so there is a prism here, which is basically sliced so that you can put your liquid in the middle of that prism and then shine light through it and measure the refractive index. That depends on temperature, and that's why this is jacketed to a water bath, which will be on at 10 degrees. So it's not 10 right now but when you do the lab, it will be cold and steady at 10 degrees. You will measure the refractive index of the liquid and the vapor. So to measure the refractive index of the liquid, very quickly, and have a pasture pipette in, in your hand, which, and I'll go get one there over here. And we would put a bulb on it. So we would very quickly open that up and then take a little bit. You don't need a full pipette full. Remember, it's going to be boiling. This will be opened. Again, I'm doing this with one hand, so. This will be opened, and you'll just deposit that liquid right onto the prism here without scratching the glass. Just a little puddle, enough to cover three quarters of it, but not so much that it's spilling out. 
it's cold at 10 degrees so it shouldn't evaporate very quickly shut that down and then there's a little switch here to actually turn on the light and we'll direct the light right through the prism and then we'll look inside and as you're looking inside you're going to turn the dial on this side so that you, we can't see what it looks like inside at the moment um, there will be a horizon it'll look like a horizon a bright top and a very dark bottom and when you rotate this course adjuster here you will bring up the line between that separates the bright top and the black bottom you'll bring it up to right in the middle of your viewfinder where the crosshairs are and at that point when you're happy it's right in the middle you will actually temporarily uh, you'll push this down not up because that turns it off okay but you'll see it's on you'll push it down which turns the light off just for a moment but it actually turns another light on inside the eyepiece that allows you to make a measurement and I think you can actually just see that a light came on inside so if we were to look inside we would be able to take the reading through the eyepiece you'll see the numbers appear okay so when you've taken your reading and you and your partner agree on what that reading is it should be one point something 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 say three decimal places you estimate the last and we'll turn that off and lower the light open it up and just use the lens papers and not an abrasive kim wipe to clean the top and bottom of the prism that was the liquid to measure the refractive index of this vapor the vapor condenses it comes down and for the most part it's going to drain back in um, a little bit of the liquid will collect here if you think it still has the liquid from the last measurement you took then you would want to release that into a waste beaker okay let it fill up again with the equilibrium liquid and then take that little amount open it and don't let it pour out but you'll be pouring collecting it into a little vial okay a vial like this um, this might not be the exact one you'll want a little bit bigger one but we'll supply that and collect that in here and then again with a nice clean pipette you will uh, take the liquid out of the vial and put it onto your prism and measure the refractive index the data then that you are recording is uh, three columns the first one is the boiling point temperature and then the refractive index of the liquid and the refractive index of the condensed liquid or the vapor and will give you a formula that um, converts refractive index to mole fraction at 10 degrees Celsius. So that essentially now your data is two mole fractions for every boiling point temperature and that's why you'll have the shape of the plot that you see in your manual. But your TAs and your instructor will tell you more about that. If you're doing this experiment um, to get the second half of the data you're at the other station and it's exactly the same thing except you're going to start with cyclohexane and add ethanol through the condenser and repeat all the same experiments and both people can be uh, or two groups can be using the instrument at the same time um, without too much trouble okay so as a last pointer make sure that when you come in the condenser condensers are hooked up so that the water goes in the bottom and out the top and that it's not splashing around down there but it's not on too fast. Okay, have fun.